Welcome to another edition of the Calgary Sessions. I'm your host, Jeff Humphreys. This is episode number 13. Um, today's guest is going to be a fun conversation for me. Um, I came across this character at the gym that I go to. This gym is like a recurring theme for my guests. This is the third one from the gym. Obviously, it's a really cool spot. So I will let him introduce himself, name, and uh, what he's up to right now. Oh, hey, guys. My name is uh, Eli Buka. Um, I'm born and raised in Montreal. Uh, I came to here... Uh, um, about 10 years ago, uh, kind of had a pretty funny evol- evolution, but now I'm a strength and conditioning coach as well as a, as a professional athlete. And uh, uh, so I'm excited to see where my career goes. I started this company called Buka Performance and Wellness. Uh, um, I launched it this year, but I started working uh, towards it last year. So Cool. Mm-hmm. So Eli covers off too. So you an artist and an uh, artist, an athlete and an entrepreneur. So it'll be a cool conversation. We're going to kind of um, weave in between both of his, uh, essentially his careers. So what's, um, when I started this show, having artists, athletes, and entrepreneurs, those are the three areas that I am personally interested in. So for you to be covering off too, is going to, uh, make this conversation even more enjoyable for me and hopefully for you. Okay. Um, so what I like to do is just take the guests back as far as they want to go. You know, I know your background a little bit, you know, so go back to uh, obviously the pro football career is a big piece of your um, world. Obviously, you're going into the um, strength and conditioning side of it. So, yeah, back it up. I'd love to go back to, you know, as far as you want to go from finding your passion, you know, and whether that's whether it's school or sports or whatever it is, just, yeah, go back to there. Yeah, I think uh, for me, I, you know, I, I go back to uh, when I was a Young pup in, in, in Montreal, I think uh, I was always been driven by sports, uh, any any sports. Uh, you know, you can take me at any court. I was just wanted to play and compete. Um, I think that obviously I, I started playing soccer at a young age. Uh, I'm from, um, I'm second generation immigrant from Africa and soccer is a big, big thing where I'm from. So uh, that's the first sport that my parents kind of directed me to. And then kind of found a friend there that his dad I uh, was a football coach as well, and so I could run. So I guess he kind of, <laughs> you know, say if you can kick, it, run, run fast with a soccer ball, maybe you can run fast with a football. So, so let's see how that looks like, right? So how old are you? How old were you? Like, right? Around, are you pretty young when this? At was? six years old. Oh, right? you were young, young. Yeah, yeah. I started playing football at six years old. Oh, crazy. Uh, yeah, I actually was too young to start, and I kind of started with the age group a little bit above me, and. Uh, <laughs> I kind of it, it was a little bit of a shock at first and you know I, I but I fell in love instantly right mm. and I was the kind of kid that uh you you didn't have to wake me up for practice I was ready and that's just, I was just intri- intrinsically motivated yep. for sports right so uh fast forward uh fast forward 20 years I'm still in that t- that field and mm-hmm. and it's kind of good to to for me to remember these times where I was an athlete and now coaching kids that yep. are now trying to do what I what I've done and what I'm doing right now. Who when you were were you you were just it was in you you just love sport. Was there any athletes back then or was there any um, people in your life that kind of brought that out of you or was it just all internally you knew this was sports was going to be your thing? It's interesting because my siblings are. are or into sports as well, right? Um, my parents, my my dad is really high in academics. He uh, he's somebody that's always been really athletic, and he ran a lot. He would just he's a more of a long distance runner, yeah. and uh, I don't think he really competed. He just loved doing it. Mm-hmm. But for him, it was a lot more about school. So even my siblings, they 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 were really motivated with sports. But you could tell that that school component and like academic component was something that they were really motivated by too. Yep. Um, for me, um, I just I just love competing. You know, I, that's just who I was. You know, I and I felt like sports was something that I was good at, and I just devoted my energy to that. Um, and it's I don't know if it came from I don't think it came from anybody. Like you were watching me, you were watching TV or anything and saw saw somebody and be like wow that guy's. I, I I had that aha moment at eight years old when I was watching football, mm. um, and I remember my mom was behind me and and I was like, one day I, I'm gonna be playing in the NFL. Like, this is going to be me, you know. And I never. You know, if I if I look at my environment in in, in terms of family, mm-hmm. I don't know if I, obviously I looked up to my brother. You know, he's always somebody that I looked up to, and yep. 
Um, but I think for me, it was just anything that has to do with sports. And I was a real high energy kid too. And mm -hmm. I think that's something that mm -hmm. I just opened the door and I see people running at the park. It could be anything. You're gone. I'm just gone, right? So I, I just, it's just, it's just in my DNA. Yeah. You know, I was born that way. And were you um, good at everything? Badminton, soccer, football, like any sport that you got into, you were, you could perform? Um, like, did you play like junior high volleyball and basketball or anything? Or were you? <laughs> Funny thing there is, <laughs> I got to, uh, so in Quebec, right? Um, school system is a little bit different. So you have, uh, we graduate in grade 11, mm -hmm. and we have to go to CEGEP, right? So with CEGEP, you have to take courses, and college courses, and you yep. get to play sports at a higher level than high school. Uh, and I joined the volleyball team. Never played volleyball before. Right? <laughs> Never played? <laughs> Never played volleyball before, right? And it's such a technical sport. Yeah. But, and, you know, I just, I think that, I could kind of get away with things just because mm -hmm. I, I was born with some athletic abilities. Yep. I wouldn't say I was. I wouldn't say I was the best on the team. <laughs> far away from it, right? But I, I, I could hold my own, and yep. I think that's something that I could do in every sport, except yep. for golf. Don't bring me on the golf course. <laughs> that's not me. <laughs> Everything but golf. So you do have a, there's a weakness. I, I, have a weak, I have a weakness. I, can, I guess for me, golf is probably more patience. I need more patience. <laughs> totally. It's, yeah, that, that's, I, you know, I definitely can't golf. It's a, such a technical, heady sport. It's Oh, yeah. It's tricky. Especially when you, you play sports where... Force is something that you have to. I like, have to be strong, and mm -hmm. golf is not that. Yeah, you have to be smooth and yeah, <laughs> precision. Probably, precision is yeah. different. Totally. Yeah. So, so you were kind of. It, it's so interesting that you can go back to a, an age. Like when mm -hmm. you say you're eight years old and you remember something, mm -hmm. it's so crazy you can say that because I just, I can't do it, and I don't. I don't know. It, it's such a. It, it's a unique, to have that kind of memory and have that moment in your life and then achieve that. It's, it seems like a, a very unique, I don't know, I don't know if it's DNA, I don't know if it's passion, I don't know if it's work ethic, like, it's, it's, it's so, it's wild for me to hear that and then know where you ended up. I just, how does that even? It's interesting. I think, um, and that's something that uh, people that know me well, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a deep thinker, right? And I'm always reflecting mm -hmm. and it, it's always happening, mm -hmm. right? And the reason why I can't relive these moments is because I'm constantly reflecting on them, mm. right? And and I, I don't, every single day I have, and it, it could be anything, I'm reflecting on it. And it kind of sticks with me, right? And yep. um, I guess I have uh, people write journals, and I think it's a really good idea to write a journal. I think I wish I was better at that. Yep. But good thing with me is I'm always reflecting, and in a way I have an internal journal of things that, that will never, mm -hmm. it's like, it's, you, you can live that moment like it was, it just happened yesterday, but it happened 20 years ago. And some, and that I feel like, for, I don't know how it happens, but I it's feel crazy. like it's because I'm constantly reliving and thinking about how I could get better and how, you know, why am I here? You know, how did this happen, mm -hmm. right? I don't just kind of let things by. Right? No, it's, it's interesting you say that because the first couple of times, um, we met mm -hmm. it, it's one of those you know you, you come across a bunch of people mm -hmm. in life right and in and out in and out and, and you when I came across you at the gym you know the first and second time all of a sudden you, you could see you thinking I was saying something and it, you're like it was almost that awkward silence because you're thinking you're like really thinking about what I was just telling you and and it was it was a it was a really interesting experience because you were like you got it like you knew right away we just started, we started bantering back and forth about um, some business ideas and some things. You could see, I could see the wheels just cranking because you knew right away. And it's that, uh, it's that internal reflection that you have. It's like, it's very noticeable. It was for me from the outside looking in, which, you know, I don't have that card. And that's probably why I can't remember anything about my, about moments in my life. So it's such a, it's such a unique skill. I just, I, yeah. It's, but I mean, it's, e it's easier to, listen to a, a bright man like you that has a lot of great things to say you know I, you you spark my attention right away so for me it's like oh this this guy has a lot of knowledge like let me let me sit down here and, and absorb as much as i can and 
and uh, I'm glad I did because it, yeah. it really impacted my life. Yeah, totally. Man. And, th and this is the cool thing, right? Like, um, that's why I love this show, obviously, too, because I get to bring interesting characters, sit them across from me, and just pe and pepper them with, pepper them with questions. And you know, literally, um, our paths crossed like months ago, mm -hmm. maybe like six months ago. Yes, and sure. and it's like, um, you know, you just meet those people that are, and a high performance athlete got a business about to go, and you could just see you're like intense and ready to do this which is you know that's definitely in me too so it was uh it's fun that that all happened now mm -hmm. here you're sitting down we can have like a conversation about anything right now definitely. and it and it feels like eh, whatever this is this is what it is right now definitely um so you know to 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 be to be a a pro athlete mm -hmm. you know it's a it's a full commitment mm -hmm. obviously i have no idea what it looks like um you played all the way through like high school and then college. So the reason you're in Calgary is because university mm -hmm. is that kind of, yes, exactly. So, um, obviously like most kids in, in Canada, I had the aspiration of going down the U S to play college. And, um, obviously back then it was, you know, 10 years ago, it was, the route was a little bit, yeah, it was harder. Yep. Right. And, you know, and I think that, uh, uh, the opportunity was there and you know i've had scholarship offers and yeah certain things you know kind of happen and head coach retiring and certain personal things happening and mm -hmm. deciding to stay in canada and, and the funny thing about my experience in calgary is uh usually you have recruiting visits right so you would go okay so okay i'm gonna go visit uh university of uh western you know yep. uh, same CC, right, right, right. Right. exactly. You yep. go on, you hop on a flight, and you go visit, yep. and you kind of make a decision from there. Like they, and they just walk you around. Like you, here's here's the here's our stadium. Exactly. Here, here's the room. Yeah, uh, and they just kind of tour you around, show yeah. you all the highlights of the. Exactly right. Here's the the guys you're gonna be playing with, and yep. they'll you know they'll take you out and have a good time, and you can kind of build a, yep. a connection with them and see if it'll be a good fit. And I've done that for the majority of the schools. Except for Calgary, right? So uh, <laughs> it was, uh, I made the decision to go to Calgary, even though we've had a relationship, you know, recruiting relationship from a year past. Yep. You know, within a month, I made a decision. And then a month later, I was in Calgary, right? And so I made a decision to come to Calgary with not knowing what it looks like. You know, I, I'm a kid from the East Coast. I, yeah. Canada's a, mm -hmm. it's a very big country mm -hmm. right so every province has its own identity so for me coming here i had no idea right so it was an interesting journey uh but sometimes you know these decisions sometimes turns out to be the the, the best ones the best. <laughs> it was was it was it strange back then for someone from quebec to come play out west because quebec seems to have like a strong football program out there and i don't you know i don't know much but mm -hmm. it just seems like a, a bit of a stretch it, it was and that's kind of why I made that quick decision. I didn't want, you know, even when I came here, there were still these coaches. They didn't know I was here at the mm. time calling me and like, cause they knew I was, I changed my mind and decided to stay in Canada instead. Yep. So yep. I decided to not tell anybody because I didn't want people playing with my decision and kind of trying to convince me to do anything else. Mm -hmm. right? I knew I, it was the best decision for me to leave yep. and experience something different. And, but you know, I, I had got reprimanded a lot, you know, why, why are you going there? You mm -hmm. know, you're wasting your time, mm -hmm. you know, they don't play the same style of football we play here. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to go far, you know, it, you know, I, I, I guess, you know, I, I'm the one who got the last laugh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do you have that in you? Do you have that like internal drive, not to like prove people wrong, but just to like, you know, you listen to people saying things, you take it reflect on it I'm guessing and then can you can you does it generate energy can you use that to then power yourself to excel I think so I think that um you know when I told my mom at eight years old that I was gonna make it to the NFL I was serious mm -hmm. you know what I mean like it, there was it was there was no doubt in my mind it was gonna happen and I think that um it's good to have that, you know, and sometimes people will fault you for that. They'll say, oh, you're too confident. You, yep. you have to have that kind of confidence. You know, that's important. There's a difference between being confident and cocky, yep. right? Yep. You have to have that self-belief. It's not about what people say about you. It's what you think about yourself, right? And I had that belief about me. And 
when these people told me that coming to Calgary was a bad decision, and no, I, I'll, I'll make it a great situation for mm -hmm. me, you know, and, and I'll prove whatever that looks like on the field. Because I know when I'm on the field, I'm in control of my performance, yeah. right? And I, I can dictate how I'm going to perform. You know, obviously there's other variables involved when you get the ball, all these different things. But yeah. I know that if I do what I'm supposed to do, I will be able to achieve my goals, right? So, and that's why if I had given them the opportunity to kind of put stuff into my brain and yep. say, oh, maybe, you know, I didn't want to let that doubt creep in, you know, because I know when, how that can affect an individual. Yep. I wanted to go based on my self-belief. And I think that a lot of time, and I, that's a message for more for the athletes out there listening, it's good to take advice from people and it's good to listen and it's important to listen because people have a lot of good information for you. And you don't know everything. You're a young person and people have experience. But you have to understand also that you know also what's best for you, right? And you, you know what you want. And you have a vision for what you want to do. And people have a vision for their life. And sometimes they're trying to put that into your life. Mm -hmm. It's important to know that, no, this is what I want to do. And I'm, you have to be able to live with a decision that you will make in your life, right? So, like I said, it's important to listen to other people but it's also important to listen to yourself. Mm -hmm. Which which is um, what can be tricky as, as a young person or a young athlete, mm -hmm. you know, to trust your gut intuition. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to be surrounded by some strong people or have a strong back, you know, family background to like just be confident enough to make those decisions. When, when you're, now that you're coaching youth, mm -hmm. do you, that like internal, you know, that when you, when you said at eight years, eight years old, you're going to play in the NFL, mm -hmm. that, that, confidence it wasn't an ego it wasn't like it wasn't cocky it was just this is a statement this mm -hmm. is what's going to happen do you when you're working with your your athletes now do they do you try and help them navigate that like confidence cocky and trying and how to how to how to how to stay on the right path for sure um i you know little thing about me i was a late developer right so in high school i was i was little little right and and but I, I still had that in me. I had that chip in my shoulder and I had that uh, factor about me that doesn't matter how big you are, you know, I, there's, I, I, I believe in myself. And that's something that sometimes coaches trying to bring it down. Like, Cause it comes across as cocky? Cocky, you know what I mean? Like, oh, like we're a team. And that's something that's important. A team, there's multiple variables in a team. It doesn't mean a team has, everybody has to be the same, mm -hmm. right? Everybody has things about themselves that makes the team great. Yep. It's to teach the athlete how to use that to his advantage and how to use that to help the team, mm -hmm. right? Being the rah-rah guy, yet, obviously, you know, can be a distraction, but it can also fuel the team. Yep. So it's about teaching the athlete how to use that to his advantage and teaching them, hey, but there's also a line you can't cross, yep. right? So the way I do it with my athletes is I let them be themselves, but they also know the parameters, yep. right? As long as you play within these parameters, I'll let you be you, We're good. right? Because it's important to learn how to be yourself and navigate yourself at a young age. Because sometimes you tame somebody and, mm -hmm. and he comes at an older age, he doesn't know how to be himself, and yep. that's when he gets into trouble, yep. right? So for me, it's important to let them be themselves and make these mistakes now. 12, 13, 14, yep. 15 years old, so yep. he can know, okay, I'm, okay, I can do this, but at this time, mm -hmm. I can't do this at that time. This mm -hmm. is a meeting, I have to listen, yep. right? So yep. it's about that balance. Mm -hmm. Which which is, um, <clears throat> it's interesting, I'm sure when the, when the, when you're educating your, your athletes right now, and mm -hmm. it's coming from you, you know, I'm sure they're, do they, do they prod you with questions or are they more like just sitting back and listening to you? Like, do you feel it's a two way conversation right now? Or are they just more consuming and trying to learn as much as they can off of you? I think it depends, you know, and it depends on the athlete as well. That's a very good question. Um, I, I didn't even practice. That yeah. just <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm telling you, smart guy. You got some really good questions. You got my wheels turning right good. now. You know, I, I think it depends on the setting, you know, Obviously, when it's we're on the field and we're in the gym, they 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 listen to what I have to say. Yep. But I usually stick around, right? So, 
then they talk yeah. and I ask questions. And I, the, the beauty about coaching personally is I learned so much from them, right? Yeah. You, you feel like I'm the coach, I'm the, I'm the one coaching, so they're, mm -hmm. I'm the expert. Yeah. They're the expert on their life, right? So, and on the experiences they've lived and that I haven't lived, right? So it's, there's so many different demographics and mm -hmm. so many different people and I learned so much from them and that's why I'm so grateful for that. And that's why I always take the time to listen, yeah. right? So you, I always believe you have two ears, one mouth for a reason, mm -hmm. right? And that goes for anything that you do, right? So it's important, to, I feel like it's important to let them speak because not only they feel heard and they feel like you care, but that also helps you evolve as a person. You can't be the only one speaking all the time. Did you, so growing up, um, so, you know, at, at university, did, was it rare to have a coach or coaches that thought this way? Is, 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 what you're, is what you're trying to do right now with your athletes different than what you've experienced throughout your playing career? Yes, and, the, and I wanna say why I do this. The reason why I do this is at some point in my life, I had an existence crisis. I didn't know who I was, right? So what was the trigger? Um, the trigger was injuries, you know, not having to do, you know, I'm, I'm, I live the fast life, right? I have to be doing these things constantly. I have to, for me, I have to, I'm always doing something, mm -hmm. right? I feel like yeah, the growth never ends, right? Mm -hmm. But then once you kind of get hurt, you're kind of in that limbo, yep. right? So, and now you start questioning things, right? So, yep. and I recognize that I, I didn't really know who I was, right? And I want these kids to know not only who you are, but I want you to know how to use your skill set to your advantage. Yep. And instead of having telling your kid what to do, hey, what do you want to do today? Yep. How, how do you want to approach this? Yep. Sometimes, hey, coach, should I do this? What would you do? Mm -hmm. Make them think. Make you think, right? I'm not going to feed you the answer right away. Yep. I want you to navigate your thought processes. And as you navigate these things, I feel like you will get a better sense of who you are. And when these little things happen, because these bumps on the road will happen, gonna happen, right? You will know. You don't always know what to do, but you'll know how to navigate it better. Yep. So, <clears throat> you know, I, I know a little, a, a little bit about the story, but, you know, as a, you know, football is a huge part of your life, day in and day out, 12 months of the year. Mm -hmm. You give everything you have to it. Yeah. And and it, it, it's it's everything, and you get hurt, mm -hmm. and and that's when you know your norm, you know the set, the routine, everything that you've done for all these years gets broken, and that's the moment you're like, oh, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. That's that's kind of how it that's how it plays out. Yeah, crazy. Um, so you're, you know, I, I like to. Because of the coaching piece, I like to bounce between both the pl sure. playing and the coaching because yeah, yeah, yeah. there's lots of there's oh, lots yeah. of cool paths to take. Mm -hmm. um, so after after you play university, where do you where is your football life? Because it's still all football, right? Yeah. Your university, and then you end university, and then where do where do you what goes on? Yeah, I was fortunate enough to, uh, you know, speak my dream into existence. You know, I uh, I was able to uh, sign a, a pro contract with the Cardinals. And, uh, you saying that, mm -hmm. does that did, when it happened, what did you think? Did you think about like, you know, the X amount of years, the 15 plus years of dedication? Did you think about being eight years old and, and saying, I was going to do that? Where did your head go? Man, you got, you coming in with these good questions <laughs> well, today, man. The, 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 good, the good thing is, is that I know how much you think. Uh -huh. I can ask you anything and you're, <laughs> you're going to have an answer for me. <laughs> so Smart man. You set, you set yourself up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Um, are we are we just like next step in the road? For, for no, it's it's important to live that moment. Yep. And I always remember I was at my family friend's wedding, and I was it was the draft, and 
I was halfway in the wedding, but <laughs> halfway on my phone and pacing back. Coaches calling me, you know, I was happy you're getting married, but something happening in my life too. So it was a beautiful day. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I finally got the call and saying that, hey, we we want you to be our priority free agent, you know. And, um, and my mom was there. My mom was there at the, oh, at the cool. wedding. It was just me and my mom. Awesome. Right? And I cried like a baby. You know, it's 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 the the process. Mm-hmm. You know, from a, a a kid from Canada playing defensive back, where there's not a lot of Canadians playing that position, like zero 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 one percent. So little. Yeah. And with me coming off, uh, missing my senior year for my torn Achilles, and having this opportunity presented to me, it was. It was so powerful, mm-hmm. and and I I didn't want to move on too quick. I needed to live this yep. experience. I needed to go through that process, and and I remember thinking to myself that just to be grateful, you know. What I mean that even though I made all these decisions, that I you not necessarily I wasn't necessarily in control of that you know I feel like I was blessed with this this opportunity and I yep. I was just grateful hmm. and you know it it's, it it really humbled me that despite everything that I did in terms of preparation I missed that most crucial year in my life in in playing is my senior year of college yep and it still happened mm-hmm. it's it, sometimes when you you work towards a goal. And things don't happen your way and you kind of panic, just have faith. Yep. You know what I mean? And, and yep. that's something that I will never forget. Just have faith that everything that you work towards is going to happen. It might not happen the way you planned it, mm-hmm. but if you stick to it and you're consistent at it, it, it will happen. And if it doesn't, something better is coming. It's really interesting you say yeah. that. Do you think that, what if, what if you weren't, what if you weren't good at football? What if you had a, what if you had a dream when you're in university and you're like I want to make the NFL? Mm-hmm. What if you weren't that good? But but you're willing to put in the work and you're willing to, you know, be consistent and and do it all, but really at the end of the day you just didn't have the talent to ever get there. Mm-hmm. Is that is that when like you said is that when you know you might not get to your goal but you're going to get to something better? Exactly. That's what it is. And there's a reason why I was the reason why I want to give up give up <laughs> give up. I want to <laughs> give back in the sports world. It's sports is just something that we do for fun. What you would gain from a sport, it's so much bigger, right? And there's a reason why all these CEOs, they like to hire athletes, former mm-hmm. athletes, mm-hmm. because you have to go through a process of constant growth. You got to be able to take critique. You have yep. to be able to... to m- constantly trying to get better yep. whatever that looks like right and i think that having a dream that big even though even though it may not happen but in the process of you getting there you will evolve so much and it's important that's why i think that regardless of the how talented you are if you trust the process the angle might not be what what you had planned yep. but something better is coming it's it's um to be able to think like that, you know, it's, it's probably tough in the moment, but it's mm-hmm. it's probably something that doesn't get said enough. And there's a lot of people out there running around talking about like, ah, just do what you love, do mm-hmm. what you love. Mm-hmm. But, they, you know, they don't really talk about the reality of oh, yeah. what the outcomes could be. You might be able to get to that spot, but you also might get to a better spot that you didn't have a plan for. Mm-hmm. Um, so after the wedding, you kind of gather yourself up and so now you're going to training camp Mm -hmm. an nfl training camp yeah and i can't imagine what that's like what that even feels like did it feel like yep this is what it's supposed to be like i'm supposed to be here i felt i I always i felt like i belong right just instantly right i was like uh, i knew i belong but it was like man (laughs) there was a guy on the team that I, i looked up to and i still look up to right and and to, to share a meeting room with him, sitting right next to him, and and, and hearing him talk and hearing him practice, it, it was mm-hmm. just a humbling experience. You know, it's a, like it, pinch yourself, like 
this is happening of here you know like 20 some years of visualizing yourself and mm -hmm. now i'm walking in these hallways and mm -hmm. you see all these hall of famers and you know you look at the logo that you're wearing and mm -hmm. it's, it's it's it was uh I, I also had to you know look at it that way as well obviously you don't want to look at it that way yeah, like, yeah. man i'm a player on this team yeah, yeah. it's like man like this is pretty surreal right mm -hmm. and and for where i came from yep but at the same time you know i, I was focused you know i knew i knew i had to prove myself and yep. you know and i took every single opportunity i had to do that you know and i was working hard and and i kept that same mentality you know it was never enough you know mm -hmm. i was there's always a little bit something that i could do and yep. you can ask these coaches i was i was in the facility you for working. a long time you mm -hmm. know early and i left pretty late i did extra stuff and yep. that was just it never changed that's you did approach. that always i always did that so you didn't have to change you just yeah. like well, this is this is what i do and That's who i am I do, right and i and i kind of always did it behind closed doors like man you'll see me at sometime at 10 p.m 11 p.m at the park lights are shut down and i'm there mm -hmm. you just didn't see me yeah, right you yeah. don't know where i was yeah, doing that right? extra. that's just i always did that you know and or i wake up at 2 a.m and uh I just do something mm -hmm. right before I mm -hmm. go back to it's just always been me right yep. so now at the pro level it's just it's just me doing me right so and when you get to a pro level at a, you know whether it's football or any sport what do you think the um natural ability you know there's the guys that are just you know freaks <clears throat> gifted DNA mm -hmm. they can do whatever they want and then there's ones that have to work at it and and really hone their craft is there is that true is there something in between or or is everybody kind of at the same kind of need to put in the same amount of work the, the interesting about football is there's many different positions right and the position that I play is I call it you you're in the hot seat right so yeah. you're playing corner Cornerback in football is, is the hard. Other than other than quarterback, yep. I'd say it's the hardest position yep. because you you're in an island and you have to cover <laughs> freaks too, mm -hmm. right? So you run fast, you run fast. a four three four four. He does too, right? <laughs> and but the thing though is, <laughs> he knows where he's going. You don't, know, right? Totally, yeah, yeah. And you have to react, you yeah. know. And it's it's and, and you 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 have to have these physical abilities of that position. Yep. Um, but there's people that don't have the craziest, they do have really good physical abilities, but not as much as others. Yep. But they get away with being smart, right? And I just think that for football specifically, uh, you, you do have to have some physical abilities, yep. but there's certain position that requires you to be a certain type of athlete to be able to perform at a high level, right? Um, can some people get away with it? A few, yep. but based on my position, there's other position that you don't yeah. need to be the freaks, yep. right? So yep. you can do a good job with corner. Yeah. You gotta do, but you gotta, you gotta be an amazing athlete yeah. and study the game and yeah. like be a thinker. Because at corner is you, you, you can be a really good athlete. If you don't understand the game, these receivers are smart too now. Right, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. they'll play play with you, right? Mm -hmm. they, you watch film on them; they watch film on you. Mm -hmm. You find their weak spot; they find your weak spot, right? Yeah. And they 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 always know where they're gonna be, right? Right. They're gonna disguise stuff like a good, and that's something I coach because I coach now. The funny thing is, I was a receiver all the way to middle of my junior college, and then I switched. So now I have both you perspective, can, right? Mm -hmm. That's why I can coach receivers and DBs. You're a dangerous now. coach now. <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> you can say that. But the thing is, a good receiver is is a is a. You have to be a a good. I don't want to. I don't want it to come off the right, wrong way, but you have to be a good salesman and a good liar in yep. a way. Yeah, like yeah. you have to be able to yep. make things appear a certain way mm -hmm. to for him to not you know to not anticipate anything yep. right so as so as a dv you can be a super athletic but not understand these things and not stick to your technique mm -hmm. and you can't you won't be a very good because there's, there's tons of kids that can run fast but guys that can play the position they're students in the game and they're technicians so it's it it is both mm -hmm. do you and when you're when you're working with the when you're athletes mm -hmm. 
um, and you have both sides to you. It must be an interesting conversation with your DBs when you can explain to them what's in the receiver's head, you know, mm-hmm. what, what, what they're thinking, what, what they're, well, not exactly what they're thinking, but at least what they're, um, um, what they might do, you know, what their tendencies are. So you can really, I'm sure it helps these kids to actually think on both sides of the ball versus just yeah. their side. Oh yeah, and, and and that's why I love what I do because I have a group of DBs and a group of receivers, and and it's like I teach them how to beat each other, right? Totally. It's 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 a fun it's a fun game, you know. Yesterday I was with them, and I said, "Hey, if you do this, that'll make them uncomfortable." So okay, and mm-hmm. then I go there and say, "Hey, mm-hmm. if he does that, you can do this, right?" Yeah. So you have to understand to be good at your position, you have to know understand the science of the other one, right? And because it's offense and defense, right? yep. you have to understand the art behind both position. And I think that will make you a more complete player to, other than just knowing what your responsibility is. Right. So how are these kids today? Are they, um, maybe I shouldn't use the word kids. They probably don't like it. <laughs> uh, as soon as I said, I was like, ah, <laughs> I, I'm a kid still. So you can you call are. them kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, how, what do you, what do you think of their skill set right now and their and their dedication compared to when you were coming up at that age? Do you feel like kids are um, more talented? Are they lazier? Are they more engaged? Like, where's your kind of sense of where these athletes are, are right now? Um, I would say that one thing is when I played, we didn't have access to all the science and all the stuff that we know now, right? So yep. these kids train smarter now, right? So God knows what kind of athletes these guys would have been 20 years ago if they had access to this stuff, now, yep. right? They train the right way about nutrition and all yep. that stuff. Before, like, I remember in high school, it was a bodybuilding workout, right? It was just heavy heavy stuff and whatever you can move, right? Yep. Now you, you, there's the science and there's the knowledge around and the periodization and doing yep. things the right way, right? Did you have, when you were in high school, did you have access to somebody like you? Like uh, an like outside of school coach, trainer kind of guy? Um, I did. Yeah. Um, so it was a thing back then? Like it wasn't... It, it was a thing. Yeah. Um, but still, it's still limited, right? So. Yep. You know, and it's not a knock on them. It's just no, what was available at the time, right? So, yep. um, and and the thing is, I, and I also went to a football like school, right? This I had football classes, no way, right? So, in a schedule of nine days, I had ten football classes, right? Mm. So, so I had, I, so my, I, I'm very grateful that I had access to that, right? Yep. So, but it's tough to say if the athletes of today are better. I'd say yes, they're prepared different, and mm. also this, the game is different too, yeah. right? But I would say one thing about kids today is, and I'm not saying any every kid uh, is the the word deserve. Mm. You know what I mean? Like mm. they feel like they deserve yep. something. You yep. know what I mean? Like you don't deserve anything. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you. You deserve my res- you I'm going to give you respect. Yep. And I'm going to give you love. Yep. But you got to earn things. And that's where these kids, you know, they they see things happening and they feel like, "Oh, well, if he has that, I'm going to have that too." Mhm. Well, you have to so what are you doing for this to happen? Mm-hmm. Right? And now they look at you to feed them this information. And they're looking for that easy route, like, oh, you're just gonna tell me I'm gonna do it. Yep. But a lot of that has to do with your your performance on the field has to do with you, not what I tell you, mm-hmm. right? I can't control how you when you go to bed. I don't control your lifestyle. I don't control what you eat. I don't control mm-hmm. who you hang out with. Mm-hmm. I don't control all these things. Mm-hmm. That's you. I only see you four hours a week, yep. right? So if you if I feel like it's that it's going to happen mentality mm-hmm. versus me. It's like when I played, it's like, what? Like, there's always something I can do better. Yep. Because I know that 
what I'm trying to achieve, it's not, it's not for not everybody's gonna yeah. do it. Right. Yeah. So I think that's the the entitlement piece. And it's and I, and it's not a knock on on I think it's just a generation. It's just the way it is. The instant gratification and generation that we live in and yep. and now you know what everybody's doing, right? Before there's no Instagram, there's no mm-hmm. Facebook started to be big at the time where yep. I grew up, right? But but the kid is doing it in Florida, I had no idea. Yeah. Now you know what everybody's doing. All the time. Right? All yeah. the time. Yeah. Right. And you see it and you you feel like, wow, he's doing that. That's me. That's not you. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Who, who you have to do something to achieve that. Yeah. Right. It's just not gonna come. I think that's the difference between it's my in, generation and this right generation. It's interesting. Um when you were you were talking about you just you just said this and it kind of got me thinking, um, you know, the way you thought and the way you kind of, however you thought to get, to live your dream, to get to the NFL, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's whatever the percentage is, I don't know how small a percentage it is, but, you know, the way you think about it and and what you were able to do physically and the dedication, do you think that's what, what, what is it that separates the people that get to the NFL versus don't get to the NFL? What, what is it? I know there's probably a bunch of things, but mm-hmm. I'm really curious to see what you think. If I, the, the thing about making it to the NFL is it's a numbers game, right? There's a lot of people that mm. should be in there that aren't just yep. because you, there's only 32 teams and 53 spots, right? Yep. team, And there's thousands, <laughs> thousands. Especially in the States. Thousands. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that want to do the same thing, yep. right? So... You know, there's you can be, do everything right, yep. and it just doesn't happen, right? Timing, coaching, mm-hmm. you know what the team, how they play, oh, yeah. how you fit, like oh yeah, all those things. And that's why I told you, like when it happened for me, I had to take the time to be grateful because you realize all realize, these like, things, all these things that could have gone wrong for me, or all these things that you know, the situation I was in, you mm-hmm. know, like the injury, and I was like, it's just. I was just grateful mm-hmm. because it could have went the other way. Mm-hmm. But the one thing um, across the board, you know, is work ethic. You have to be able to be coachable. Yeah. You never get comfortable, right? Just Some push. kids, that's what happens with a lot of kids, right? Mm-hmm. They are, oh, I'm good. They're the right? best in high school. That's it. And then right. they just stop working. Oh, yeah. It's like, and sometimes I'll run to these things with these kids. It's like, wow, I'm the best on my team. <laughs> right? So it's like <laughs> everybody in the NFL <laughs> was the best on their team. Totally. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so what? It's like, not, yeah. And you, the best where? Like, compared to who? Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's mm-hmm. and it's not even about, it's about you. It's, it's, it's never enough. Mm-hmm. And that's and that, I'm I'm kind of glad I was a late developer because I always had to do extra. Yep. You know what I mean? Like there was yep. no way around it. And yep. it became part of my identity. Just what you do. All the time. Mm-hmm. And it's not, it doesn't have to be you running around all the time. It's like, okay. I remember in college, the amount of film I watch, it's like I was glued to that thing, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. I was grateful at the time we had the, digital platform where you can watch film on, on your phone. Instead of like sticking Go, in uh, VHS exactly. like TV. <laughs> and that's, you know, but you, it, it's funny you say that, but kids now, they take this for granted. Mm-hmm. It's like you have access to all this stuff. Like now. Instantly, right? High def. You don't have to go nowhere. Mm-hmm. You just click a button. Mm-hmm. But I'm the best on my team. Mm-hmm. And that's good enough for you, yeah. right? It's that relentless effort for excellence. Is that the... You know, take out all the other variables, mm-hmm. timing, coaches, mm-hmm. all those things. Is that the, do you think that is one of the biggest factors? One of the biggest factors. And, I, and, and to be honest, you also get to the pro level and you see guys that are like that, right? So they're, they're, the, just, they're all skill. They're, they're just skill and... Timing? Timing. They're, they're you know, they're fortunate. Yep. You know what I mean? And, yep. and they're blessed and and good, good for them. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, like one of my close mentors says, you know, 
is a study of one really is the reality for everybody, mm -hmm. it's, it's not the truth, yeah. right? Yeah. You have to, what can you do to put your best foot forward to achieve that is one thing I would say is the relentless effort to achieve excellence and relentless. Like it doesn't stop. Do, do you think Tom Brady is done mm -hmm. getting better? Mm -hmm. He's in his 40s. Mm -hmm. Which is right? Mind altering. It's always, yeah. right? He's always trying to get better, mm -hmm. right? And that's what a great athlete does. Can you take that into your business now? Mm -hmm. And and like do you feel like you can do the exact same thing? Like just give everything and just be relentless with the Buka performance? Of, of course, and you know, and the reason why I, I do things the way I do it is obviously I like the connection piece with the athlete. Yep. Um, but the, if I look at it, I, I kind of, I, I, I'm very selective who I work with. You mm -hmm. know, I, I, I kind of pick and choose and it allows me to give them a little bit of peace of me. Yep. I, what I what I did is I kind of transferred everything that I've done, that I've accomplished as a pro athlete, and now I'm kind of shifting towards business. Mm -hmm. And not just the way I approach business, but also I approach coaching. And I, I, for me, it's important to, to relent, the relentless effort to be the best coach I can be. But right? It feels like... And you, I have a huge sense of responsibility mm -hmm. constantly. Mm -hmm. And it's hard sometimes, right? You, you always feel like you need... You, I always want to be the best version of myself for them, right? And and and, and it's and it's hard, but in the process, you know, I think that if I don't do that, you know, I I'm not only cheating them, I'm cheating me, yeah. right? I have to give, I have to do that, I have to always. There's you're never good enough as a coach. There's always things you can get better at, and. And, and one thing that one of my other close mentor told me is you can learn all the different ways of periodization and all the different ways of squatting, all these different, learn how to be a better coach first, right? Mm -hmm. And that never ends, never ends. So it's, you, you can tell, like you can tell what it, you know, listening to what it took to become a pro athlete is that relentless energy to either to be the best or to, you know, do as much as you possibly can mm -hmm. to succeed. And now this coaching thing, it feels, the energy feels the same, like the same. It almost feels more right now when you're talking <laughs> about the coaching. Like there's a fire that's just rolling right now because you know, because you're just getting started. Like Buka launched April 1st. Yeah, around April, uh, April 2nd. Like, I didn't well, want it to be April 1st. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> like officially, yeah. you know, officially launched. April but you've, 2nd, been, yeah. you've, you've been working with kids for, yeah. you know, for a while, while now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So crazy. No. Um, so after the NFL, mm -hmm. it takes you up north. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know much of the story, but there's definitely some people that listen to the show that are some diehard fans. Mm -hmm. So um, wh what happened when you came up north here? It was uh, interesting because, you know, I, I got drafted by the Rough Riders. Yep. And uh, I'm a city kid, right? I'm from born and raised in Montreal mm -hmm. and, you know, then I go from that to Calgary, then I go to the NFL, and mm -hmm. then I end up in Regina, right? Small town, mm -hmm. blue collar town. Mm -hmm. Like it was just, it was different. Way different. Super different, right? Yep. It's, you, you, you know, downtown not very big. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's like you, what's going on here, right? Yeah. But man, that fan base is is everything that it looks like, and it, more. If you play football in the CFL, you have to experience that. Mm. Playing for the Rough Riders. Mm. These people are the great, like, some of the greatest fans. Like, it's it, they're unbelievable. You like, know, the support. It's in their blood. Like, they bleed green. Yep. Like, and it's not a term that it's, they bleed green. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. The support you get from the community is unbelievable. What, like, what's an example, you know, what is, what is an example? Like you walking down the street? Second day I was there. Hey, welcome to the team. 
How you know who I am? No way. Just cruising down the street? Walking down the street. Like just walking down the street. He knew I just got it two days ago. Wild. Like they can, re- they recognize, like yeah. it's, 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 it's just, you go on game day, you drive around the city, green everywhere, right? <laughs> like, I remember the Canada Day Classic, the Canada Day Classic, like we're driving to the stadium, he's like, you feel like you really, you're playing for something. Mm-hmm. Like these people, you mean a lot to them. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. That You can feel it. And, mm-hmm. and that, that's something that, you know, playing the, the game is, is, is fun. But playing for the Rough Riders is, uh, is something that I, I, I took pride in. You know, I, I take pride in. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a huge tradition. And, and you, you, you want to give these fans what they're waiting for. Because like they, they, they're, they're not just expecting from you. They yep. give you a yeah. lot. Right? So. And, and you, you get that sense? Like you have that sense of like these, they're bleeding for it. They're literally... We're like we're we're not everything to them, mm-hmm. but they believe so much in the Rough Riders that when you get on the field, you understand that you're actually you owe it to these fans to perform. To that, even to that extent, I feel like I owe it to them. You know, I I owe it to them to to give my best yeah. at all, every play, yeah. just because Regina is not a city that oh, there's festivals yeah. and there's huge concerts all the yep. time and football is what they have mm-hmm. and and it's a community owned team yep. you know what i mean like they their excitement of the year is mm-hmm. is watching us play mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. they don't ask so much right yeah they they just want football yep why don't just i can give them that i can give them that right so for me it's Beyond everything that they give me as an athlete, the love and the support, and you know, it's when I mean support, it's not like not just cheering. Yeah. Everywhere you go, there's a Rough Rider fan. And right. You, so this is you know this is me just being mm-hmm. a fan, but like you know you go out for dinner, you know, more often than not, somebody coming to say hi or like, great game or whatever. Like, is it is it, is Regina built like that that you can literally walk you know. On a weekly basis, somebody's coming up to you and saying, "Hey, you know, good, oh, luck, yeah. good luck this week." Oh yeah, oh yeah. You not just in Regina. I met Rough Rider fans in China, and they just like call you. There's like it's like <laughs> they they obviously they they ask, "Hey, you know, you from Canada?" They say, "I play for the Rough." Riders. I'm from Regina. You know, they're everywhere, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And these people ended up helping me develop. And, and gain knowledge in the real estate world, right? And making the decision purchases, right? It, the much the amount of support they give you beyond football, mm-hmm. S- smallest thing. I mean, Calgary. I need a pair of orthotics, mm-hmm. and I needed it now because I had issues in my feet. Yep. The owner is uh, from China, <laughs> and figured it out for me. Like the the. the, the, the I, I owe it to them. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, I, they 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 give you so much support. You you all you have all they want is football. Yeah, I should be able to give them that. Yeah. yeah. Do you, were you surprised? Is there um, was there? Did you know that the Rough Riders like it was that? Were you surprised at the level it got to? I heard about it. Right? Okay, and, and I hear about it too. You yeah. know, being like a sports fan, you hear about like Riders fans are crazy, and, mm-hmm. and I worked for one for nine years. Mm-hmm. It was like crazy I, like i have close friends that are diehard writers guys uh-huh. and they're diehard like uh-huh. they're freaks but did it did it go like above i think i really got a grasp for it my second year labor day classic mm-hmm. against winnipeg and you come out the tunnel <laughs> and you it was the atmosphere in there. Nothing unmatched. Never it was it. crazy. Mm-hmm. These people, like deafening, like were you just like? It was so intense. Like the energy was so intense. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like in Canada mm-hmm. to experience that. Mm-hmm. 
Man, like I, I tell everybody, like you got to fly to Regina and go to a Labor Day Classic game. Mm. That, like you can sense the sense of, they, they feel that they're a part of it. You yep. know what I mean? Like yep. you're playing, yep. but they're a part of it. They're right beside you. Oh yeah. And like you, the advantage we have when we play there, it's huge. Mm. And it was sold out all the time. Which as an athlete, mm-hmm. it's got to be, it has to feel amazing. Oh, yeah. Every, every game day, you know what you're getting into. Even beyond that, I remember finishing last year, we, we uh, two years ago, because actually we didn't play, um, we clinched first in the, in the West, right? Mm-hmm. And we are out there celebrating in the locker room, and we've been dancing around for 30 minutes. <laughs> and they're like, uh, oh, uh, would you guys be uh, okay just saying hi to the fans outside? Hold on, they're still there. <laughs> we go outside. There's a crowd of people. They've been waiting on the field to be able to celebrate. It's like Crazy. On 11 p.m. Was like, it cold too? It's cold. The game is over. <laughs> like we've been dancing around the locker room for half an hour, and now these they're still there. And all they want is for you to go out there and say celebrate hi. Them. Yeah, they just. You know what yep, I mean? Like, yep. it, it's it's unbelievable. Like, I, I can I can keep going on and on about that fan base. They're amazing. It yeah. Just nothing like it in the CFL. I may be biased because yeah. I haven't experienced yeah, other yeah. things, but it, seems, it would be hard yep. to match that. Yep. You know, and in the CFL, it would be hard to match that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, well that's what you know. What I wanted to ask you about coming up north because I know there's a couple of people that I'm going to tag in this podcast. Oh, for sure. just, uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Just so oh, like, for sure. And and they need to know that. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels that way. There's other players mm-hmm. on the team that feel that way. Like, the as a, in a fo- pro football career, there's ups and downs, right? Yep. You know, there's there's days you you may not feel like it. You yep. know what I mean? Like you. You're a human being, mm-hmm. but they give you that energy. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. they, the impact, they, beyond just football, you know, the energy they give us. It's, uh, I'm not, and I'm sure I'm not the only one mm-hmm. that feels that way. And it's important for them to know that, you know, what you do yep. might, you know, might appear like, oh man, over the top or whatever, mm-hmm. but it doesn't go unnoticed. Like we, we truly appreciate it. And so cool. There's people that been playing in Saskatchewan for a long. They're not from there, mm-hmm. right? They're there because of you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You were fans. Yep. Yeah, that's why they're there. So mm-hmm. crazy, man. And you, like I said, you hear about it. You mm-hmm. hear about it all. You know, rider stories, and mm-hmm. even running around Calgary. Like yep. there's green flags all over the place, mm-hmm. and like, oh well, yeah, <laughs> they're, they're quick to tell you that oh, yeah. they're riders fans. Oh, yeah. Like it's a, it's such a thing. Oh yeah. So Buka performance. Mm-hmm. Um, this is this is kind of uh, so now you're doing two things right, mm-hmm. still playing ball mm-hmm. and launching your business and yep. and this is um, did you always know you want to go down this path, as in uh, coaching, or is this a kind of a a new th- a new ish thought? Obviously, you can't just turn it on. But I always known that um, I wanted to uh, work with student athletes. Mm. Um, the one thing that uh, throughout my career as a pro athlete, even before, is I don't know, it just kind of happened that way. I've just been exposed to working with youth a lot. And back before, I just didn't think that I had the patience for it, you know? Mm. And I just felt, like, oh, no, I'm just going to do this and work with the older guys. But as I work with them, I just, they're, Kids are special. Man. Like they got to give you energy, I'm guessing. It's, it's, <laughs> they, and I hope some of them watch this is, they don't understand how much they, how, how grateful I am that I'm, I have the opportunity to coach them. Yep. They're so, kids are so special mm-hmm. and they have their, their potential is exponential. Yep. And the love they give you, right? The way they look at you, it's, it's, mm-hmm. A, a, you 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 can't you you have to take the time to appreciate it you yep. know and so for me the way I look at it is 
if I if I can, how can I say this? It can, if I can, like I said, I always say things happen for a reason. Mm-hmm. And if I don't know if I, you know, I've, I've done some work with underprivileged youth and work from, with kids from, you know, all different demographics. Yep. And I feel like my company is resembling that now, you know. And, cool. And that's why, you know, I... You, like I said, things always happen the you know the way they should, mm-hmm. and the way I, I'm I'm approaching this company is I want to make sure that each kid that that comes through my company and, and leave, and they could be for five months, it can be for three, four years, five mm-hmm. five years. The one thing I want them to take away is obviously is hard work and work ethic. Yep. So that's something that they 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 know that from me. Yep. But whatever I've done for you, now it's your turn. Transfer it. You have to give it back. Mm-hmm. And that's something that they, they, I always tell them. Hmm. Amen. Again. I'm just a little piece of the puzzle. Mm-hmm. Now I, that I'm giving you these tools, yep. now I go change the world. You know what I mean? Like It's a big, that's, you know, that's a, uh, for you to, for you to go down that path, you know, that's a, it's a big shift from regular coaching, you know? And, and, and that's, and it, I wish, you know, and, and I'm not saying my way is the best. There's multiple different yep, ways, totally. you know what I mean? And, yep. and I respect all coaches out there. But every kid has a specific skill set mm-hmm. that can impact so many people. Mm-hmm. And you have to take the time to recognize what it is, empower it, and teach them how to use it. And regardless of what that looks like, mm-hmm. because it may not be on the football field, on the on the ice, or wherever that is, it may be in an office one day. Yep. It may be, mm-hmm. hey, he may become an artist, mm-hmm. right? Yep. But once he has that voice, because he has learned how to how to navigate himself and know how to be himself and know what he needs to do with it. I, I can't wait to sit back to 20 years from now and be like, I, 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 there you go. That's how you do it. Dude, it's going to, it's going to be so wild for you to, to do that, you know, cause I think I've had, I've had some other, um, like hockey guys, obviously I grew up playing hockey so I've had them on the show and, mm-hmm. and we talk about this, the things you learn in the dressing room, mm-hmm. you know, all these intangible things that it's not skating faster and shooting harder. Mm-hmm. It's these skills that you learn that let you, let allow you to sit in a boardroom mm-hmm to to speak confidently, mm-hmm. to know your turn when it is to speak, all these little things that, you know, the coaches I had were all great. N- none of them would have, you know, this conversation of, you know, wh- what you're really learning here. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you know it better than most. You can play sports and such a small percentage of people actually make it as their livelihood. Mm-hmm. But if they can get a scholarship, if mm-hmm. they can play CIS, you know, like if you can get them to that and then they become these amazing humans that you get to look back on in 20 years i think it's going to be a it'll be crazy for you to watch you know like i I can't imagine what it's going to be like when you know 20 years from now you get a text from some kid saying dude i just started my own company and i have 25 people working for me Mm -hmm. and it's it's unbelievable and and it it, one thing too is i've had my experiences as a coach every coach has experiences Mm -hmm. and the they don't feel like they don't want to open up about these things, right? And they just, you know, and stay formal and yep. all. But man, like, share that information. Yep. Share it. You don't overshare. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, obviously, be, you know, you have to respect some boundaries. Yep. But share. You yep. know what I mean? Like, it, these kids, it, they, there's thing, still things that coaches told me when I was seven, eight years old, nine years old. That I still live by to this day, which is just, and and and, and that and that's the powerful, like your words, the way you, the words you use are, you have first of all, you you also have to take responsibility for that, and understand that you have to be careful how you talk to people. Yep. But the impact some of these coaches I had in my life, and the way I can coach now. Yep. You you have to give that to them. You have to share it and make sure that you. You build that relationship where, obviously, there's boundaries. Mm-hmm. You can't cross boundaries, yep. but 
open relationship because you don't, there's mistakes that you made. You don't want them to make. Mm-hmm. You got to say it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I go mm-hmm. home and say, ah, <laughs> should I have said this? <laughs> I'd rather said it and not say it. Yep. And I'll let him use that information the way he chooses to. You know what I mean? Do you think you're, um, those coaches that had that that you remember, do, they, do you think they know that? The things that they said to you actually like stuck with you for, you know, 20 plus years? Um, and the, only, the only reason I ask is that I, I, you know, you're, you're going to be in the exact same situation in 20 years. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? And are these, you know what I mean? That it's, it's true. Um, I think I personally, with the people that I still talk to, I do a good job of telling yeah, them, you, like, they know. So, hey, I remember I hopped on a Zoom call with one of a coach that coached me six years ago, still a man, good mentor to me. And, yeah. like, he's talking and I finished one of his sentences, like, six years later. Awesome. Right? It's like, yeah. I still remember you told me that. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? It's like, uh, and I think that's the reward, right? Yeah. He actually listened. You know what I mean? And Mm -hmm. he applied it. And here's where he's at right now. And I think also for all the, you know, young athletes or older athletes out there listening, it's important to reach out and say these things to the coaches that you've had, you know? Mm -hmm. Because now that I'm in it, people always think, oh, like, you're a coach. You're only a coach when I'm there. Yep. 90 minutes. 90 minutes and I'm out. I'm constantly mm-hmm. thinking about you. It's, it's got to be exhausting, right? It, 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 it is because if you do that, you have how many, how many athletes do you have, right? Yep. You're always thinking about them, right? Mm-hmm. And you're constantly trying to find ways to improve it. And you're not, I'm not doing it because I want you to give me something. Yep. I just want what's best for you. Mm-hmm. But one reward I can have is... 10 years later, it's just, hey, man, remember that day you said that? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, thank you. That'll fill you up. That's it. You know what I mean? Like, who knows when that text is going to come or that phone call? You'll be whatever, family, in a career, doing whatever you're doing, you're going to get that. And you'll be like, Mm -hmm. oof. I actually had an experience like that, and I would like to share with you. No way. I had a young athlete. Um, and I won't say her name. Yep. She'll know who she is. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I hold her. I hold her really close to my heart. She's yep. a special person. Um, and I remember when I saw her on the field, and we were uh, working on drills, and I could see she has so much potential, like so much potential. And she's such a a special human. Mm-hmm. She's such a good person, and she's. She has that energy and presence about it that she's going to be a leader or whatever she does. But she would always hold back. Like, it's like she don't want to do too much. And I remember multiple times throughout that time, hey, just be confident. Like, you, you, you have it. Don't mm-hmm. worry. You know, and it's not perfect right now, but just, just know that I see it. Yep. Just be confident. And she was looking at me like, what do you mean? Like, be confident. Like, just be confident. Have yep. faith and be confident. And I kept telling her that, telling her that, telling her that. And one day, she came to me. She was like, um, oh, God bless her soul. <laughs> She's like, uh, she almost made me, you know, I had tears in my eyes, you know, I kind of, mm-hmm. but what she said really, she said, um, remember the, other, the uh, last year on the field when you tell me to be confident? You are right. Uh, I see it now. And I'm, thank you for saying that. Crazy. You know? And for, I mean, your, your, your whole body just like start. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because at the moment you feel like the annoying coach mm-hmm. that's just telling a kid yep. to be confident. Yep. But it resonated with her. Mm-hmm. And it took months, right? Sometimes it takes years. Yep. But I'm, I'm glad she got it sooner. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Some people, they just, <laughs> they don't get it. Yeah, right? Yep. And then later they get it. But yeah. 
that for me, it's the best gift she can ever give me. Totally. Right? Tell me that. Yeah. It's, yeah. Thank you for saying that. It's, it's, it, so I feel like I th- obviously coaches should share more, but athletes should share that too. Which is a different way to think, right? When I, when I, the, all the coaching that I've been around, and I've coached like young hockey kids mm-hmm. like uh, Adam and Pee Wee's, so mm-hmm. like pretty young kids, but you know, it's, it's usually a one-way conversation, right? Mm-hmm. It's usually a coach like at yeah. a board talking, you yeah. know, you're in a game, you're talking, you're after a game, you're yeah. talking. Uh-huh. The two-way conversation is definitely a, a, a different way to approach it. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the thing. And that's why, that's the way I coach is, it's not dictatorship, you know. I'm coaching you, so you got to be involved in the process. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, this is your life, right? And obviously, you have to look for me for direction. And at the end of the day, we'll, we'll, the plan, I, if I say we're going to do this, we're going to do this. Yeah. But we're going to base, base it also, hey, man, how do you feel today? Like, yep. you know, what do you feel like we can do better as a group? Like, what, what can I do better? Like, what do you guys need, right? Mm-hmm. That, that's coaching. Yep. You know what I mean, like, if I wanted to be a drill sergeant, mm-hmm. I would have been to the army. I would have been. I would have went to the army, right? Yeah. I want to coach, right? Yeah. I want. I want these kids to coaching. The beautiful thing about coaching and teaching, and I think every coach or teacher can tell you that. The m- you learn as you teach, mm-hmm. not because you're learning yourself. The people you teach, yep. teach you, yep. right? Yep. And if you want to evolve as a coach, allow your athletes to teach you. You can, you can learn, you can read all the books you want to read, mm-hmm. right? Allow them to teach you. If you don't do that, you're limiting yourself. It, and you're limiting what you can give to your kids as well, or athletes or whoever you coach yeah. or teach. It, it's, a, it's a very unique way to go about it. And I think you just starting doing this, it's going to be really cool to sit back and watch where this thing goes because I think it's going to do something uh, big. So it's going to be fun for me to watch it because, um, oh, the cool thing, the other, the other cool thing is you're doing hockey players. You're working with hockey players, mm-hmm. which is like, that's my wheelhouse. <laughs> <laughs> and when I, when I figured out you were you're, you're training, coaching hockey, I was like, yeah. wow. If I was still, you know, if I was 13 getting trained by a, pro football player i would have been like what is happening right now <laughs> <laughs> That's true. sometimes i wonder what they think you know and i, I think that um obviously growing up in montreal mm. you, you're an abs fan are you still a abs fan it's I, I, it's this in my blood. It's, that's all you got. It's, that's, that's, uh, that's I'll me. give it. I'll give you a pass. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I, I'm 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 proud. I'm a proud Abs fan. You should be. <laughs> and you know, I, I I always watched hockey. Hmm. You know what I mean? And I I didn't play. I didn't compete uh, yep. hockey. I just in in the winter back then there was no Instagram. Like all mm-hmm. you could do was go outside, mm-hmm. and that's all you did. You went to the ODR and we played mm-hmm. hockey. No right? So for me is. It's when, when the, the opportunity presents itself, it wasn't new, new. Obviously, yep. I'm learning, yep. and I'm, 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 I'm constantly evolving as a coach, yep. and to give them what they need. Mm-hmm. But it's a, uh, but at, at the end of the day, movement is movement. It's yep. universal, right? Totally. So, some people get oh, you, you know, you have to play hockey to understand. Mm, not really, mm-hmm. right? You, you. I think that. Obviously, I have a background in strength and conditioning that mm-hmm. a, a very extensive one that, that allows me to, to do my job. But yep. at the same time, I have a really good understanding of movement. Yep. And the one thing I do and I also I would encourage other coach to do is don't just don't just stay in the weight room. Go mm-hmm. watch these kids practice. Mm-hmm. Right. Don't see how they, they move. Yep. Right. And make that will make you better as a coach. Yep. Don't just wait for them to tell you what they did at practice. Mm-hmm. Right. Watch their games, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and be present. You know, that, that's how you evolve, right? It takes a lot of energy to do that. It does. It does, right? Mm-hmm. And and coach, coaching and teaching has to be a... It's not about you. No, man. You know what I mean? Like, that's why people... And I feel like this industry sometimes is like, oh, they're trying to get the quickest money right away. Yep. But you have it wrong. Yep. Coaching is not about you. It's about them. Right, so yep. what can you br- give to your athletes so you, the 
general populace, whoever you work with. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not a easy job, but it's a, a job that if you take it serious yep. and do it the right way, whatever you, whatever that looks like for you, the impact you can have in somebody's mm -hmm. life is, is, there's no cap. There's, There's no, no cap, cap to it, right? No. So don't just limit yourself and just being in the weight room yep. or being at the track. Go watch them practice and mm -hmm. watch them watch their games and all these different things that will allow you to evolve also and yep. will allow you to give their, these kids what they need. It's awesome, man. I, I can tell how passionate you are. You, you like you genuinely light up when you're talking about <laughs> coaching. Like you just, that inner fire that you have is like, is right there, which is awesome to see. Um, dude, I could talk to you forever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, this is awesome, man. Like, I love this. It's just, it's easy to, it's, e it's really easy to talk to you. And I think, um, I think your athletes are, are probably super lucky to have you around because I think what you're up to right now is very unique. Um, I should put a bow on this sucker. The, the only question I ask my guests that's canned is when I say the word Calgary, where does your head go? So I'm, I'm very curious to see what, uh, what you say. The interesting thing about me being in Calgary is if, if, you, if you had said Montreal, I would have said the word that comes is roots. Yep. Those are my roots, yep. right? My identity. Mm-hmm will always be yep. I'm from Montreal. Mm -hmm. Like this is who I am. Yep. Right. And and I feel like people know that about me when they meet me, right? The mm -hmm. way I the way I talk, the way I dress, the way I yep. approach things, yep. you know, and how direct I am when I speak. That's but, what it's from, hey? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I'm, even think I'm about French, it. I'm French Canadian, man. I just <laughs> I just go straight to the point. <laughs> but um I I think Calgary experience the reason why i say that is i wasn't just a college student you know i i had an impact in other fields you know i, I worked in the restaurant industry for a long time you know as i went from <laughs> name it i was a doorman to a busser to a bartender to a server to a supervisor to a lounge, lounge manager Mm -hmm. Like I've I've done it all in the restaurant industry. You know, Wild, and, and you know I I I had a growth process in that. Right? Dude, and, you and I could have talked for two hours about that. <laughs> <laughs> we could talk about that too. And then, but then at the same time, I came here at nineteen, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, you're you're a young dude, mm -hmm. and you have your experiences. You make mistakes, and mm -hmm. then you come from. Quebec, you go to Calgary, it's a different culture. You have to, it's a culture shock. You have to adapt to that, mm -hmm. you know, and then it, it, it's just so, sometimes I drive and I just, flashbacks, right? Mm -hmm. Flashbacks of, of, because when, this was the first time, in my, and obviously I, I've done camps for a limited period of times where I had to go away from home. Yeah. was the first time in my life where I was on my own. Mm -hmm. I had to respond to myself. Like I have to answer, I mean, answer to myself. Yep. Like, there's nobody kind of monitoring what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You make a lot of mistakes, right? And, yep. and you have these flashbacks and, and you know, it's like, man, like stupid mistakes you make, right? It's just, mm -hmm. but that's the beauty of life. But when I think about Calgary is, is experience. And that's why I think that when I came, I had no intention of staying here. When I came here, I was like, oh, I'm just coming here. It's just business, yep, right? Yeah, Business and I'm mm -hmm. out, right? Mm -hmm. And it just, one thing led to the other to where I'm like, <laughs> I went from being a lounge manager to being to the, in the NFL. <laughs> it's, it was the way things happened in that four so years. Crazy, it's like... <laughs> So crazy. I remember coming back to the restaurant <laughs> I was working in in July or like two months after, and I was sitting in the booth of the restaurant I was an arm manager at. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting right in the seat where 
I'm a little bit extreme when I kind of get involved in something. I want it to be done right. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was a rollout. You know, you know, every summer there's a new yep, rollout. New menus, like a, new menus, menus right? Yeah, I know, man. Right? And then you have to relabel things. Yep. And and I want it to be done right. It's mm -hmm. my first rollout, and mm -hmm. I, I've got to be... I, the amount of nights I slept in the restaurant, slept there in that boot that I was sitting at. I was... I'm sitting in the same boot <laughs> that I used to sleep in, and now I'm a NFL player. First of all, how did I even get to being a lounge manager? Mm -hmm. I had no intentions of mm -hmm. doing that, and now I'm in the NFL. It's just the amount of experiences That's that wild. I've I've had in in Calgary. I want like Calgary will always be a, a special place for me, mm -hmm. you know, and and a place that I call home now, mm -hmm. you know, and. And I always will, you know, it's, it, these years will, it's kind of like a stepping stone for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. right? And, and my kids will, will have to know about this. And for sure. My wife knows about it, you know, mm -hmm. so it's something that it, it's, 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 a, it's, Calgary is a, is a lot of, a lot of, a lot of memories. Do I, it's, it's so, your, your story is. It, there's so many moving pieces and <laughs> for you to end up in Calgary and to have, you know, to start laying new roots uh -huh. in Calgary. It's, uh, it's, it's an interesting path to, to say the least. It is, but it's, that's the beauty of life. It's so cool. And I, I can, you could for sure talk, say the same thing about your path and how things happen. And yep. if I asked you five years from now, you probably wouldn't be doing the podcast, right? Totally. You probably had a different plan in mind, Yep. but I think the beautiful thing about Calgary is that makes me feel at home is the environment mm. and the people that, you know, the support I got from the city, yep. you know, and, and allow me to navigate this crazy thing called life, mm -hmm. you know, in that way for me and, and that allowed me to, to grow and the people that, that I have today that I consider family that, I constantly, even though I'm constantly trying to improve myself, mm -hmm. they're constantly trying to see me improve. And that's the circle that you need to have. Yep. Mm -hmm. So true. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. This is one of the cooler conversations I've had for sure. Um, <laughs> I really appreciate your time. I appreciate it. You're a busy character. And uh, yeah, it's been really cool sitting down with you and kind of hearing your story and just listening to you think and how you, you know, how, how you got to where you are on both sides, you know, the professional ball and the, your your own business now so i appreciate it and I, i'll return it to you and i hope one day i have a chance to do this and interview you because you know the impact that you you had in my business and the conversation that we have man like whoever's listening to this this man and in terms of of, of knowledge of of building a brand and and marketing it, it's he has such a big impact in in, in my business And I was gonna go a, a one route, and in we, a we brought you back. We brought you back <laughs> in a thirty-minute conversation. I went a completely different direction, and that would not happen without you. So I, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's cool, man. It's cool. It's cool to hear that. And as soon as I figured out your last name was Buka, <laughs> I there was only one path to go down. So I'm glad you went there. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad I did that too. Okay. Well, uh, thanks, Ian. We'll talk soon.